In this video, we're going to have a look at Relevance AI as one no-code to low-code platform, which allows us to create AI agents. AI agents is a buzzword in 2025 because everybody says we are creating agents everywhere. And um, there are several ways to create them and several platforms. And they uh, comprise of no-code as well as coding tools. And I spent the last couple of weeks trying out several uh, ways how to create agents, uh, which involved coding, for instance, with Pydantic AI, which is a great framework. I can also show you this in another video. If you're interested, let me know in the comments. Uh, but also there are a lot of no-code platforms out there, for instance, N8N, and also this Relevance AI, for instance. And today I'm going to give you an introduction to Relevance AI and just to see how it works. Now, in this case, I'm already on the platform and you can see that I have um, here a free plan, which is $100 or actually credit points. It's not dollars itself, uh, but this is the daily limit, meaning I can uh, run um, a few workflows a day for free. And then uh, my token limit or this limit is, uh, well, ex exhausted. And then, of course, I need to wait another day. Or, of course, I could buy um, the product itself. But for just testing it, I think uh, you can sign up for free, so it doesn't cost any money. And then you create your agents as well as your tools. And so this is what it looks like. You can see I have created several agents. And also you can see a description here. And then there are also tools. So tools are actually, um, well, specific, um, well, skills which we give our agents. And then we can create here uh, more or less uh, an agent framework, meaning we can create, um, well, basically a workflow which consists of several agents which work together. So that's the idea behind that. And um, just, you can see that you, here are the agents. If you click on new agent, you would be able to create a new agent. And just to show it to you, if I click new agent here, you see that I have a little agent icon. I can change this. I think it. It's actually kind of funny because it reminds me of playing Game Boy in the 1990s. It's, uh, well, maybe uh, some of you are too young for that, but this is really because it's so pixeled. That's why it's kind of interesting. You can give the agent a name and you can also give it an agent description, which is helpful, especially if you have a multi-agent framework, because then you want uh, the other agents to know exactly what the agent is doing. So that's why this is interesting here to write exactly a description of what an agent is actually doing or capable of. Uh, then you can have several triggers. Um, in this case, I'm using the platform itself to, to chat with my agent and agent framework. But of course, you can also add triggers to that. So for instance, you can run an agentic framework, so your agents, uh, based on, for instance, receiving an email via Outlook, Gmail, or also you can see here other kinds of connectors as well as premium triggers. So premium trigger, for instance, whenever you receive a WhatsApp um, message or uh, something on LinkedIn, then you can use these options in here as well. But in this case, if you're on a free plan, um, then you need to skip this. And then there are also webhooks, so you can also uh, trigger based on a webhook, so when a specific, um, well, address, so a get request is sent, for instance, a post request to a specific um, a host, then, of course, you can also trigger the agent framework if you want. And there's also SAP here, for instance, and other and API documentation, you can find it here. So uh, then a uh, very important, the core instruction. Here, you specify exactly uh, what the agent is doing. So what is um, the name of the agent? What is the goal of the agent? What is uh, the standard operating procedure? Meaning, what are the steps the agent is executing? And also, what uh, should the agent keep in mind? What should the agent avoid, for instance? You provide examples, so all these kinds of things need to get uh, or put in here in this. You also have the flow builder. If you want to have this visually, you can also do this by clicking here and then add instructions and conditionals. But uh, for me so far, that was actually not required because the core instructions are good enough if you are very specific having this. And you can also uh, format this in Markdown. I'm gonna show you an example just in a minute. So uh, beside this, we have then other kinds of things, abilities. Uh, this uh, here, as you can see, is paid a feature, so I have not used it. Uh, but the tools, that is important because here you can add tools. So based on the tools you've already created, you can add them simply by clicking add, and then the agent has access to this specific tool. And you can see here a few of mine, for instance, anime search tool, which is basically a Google search, which searches for anime uh, related things. Um, then I have here, for instance, a crypto uh, price lookup. I have also the labs tool just to convert, for instance, text to audio um, and other kinds of tools which are in there as well. So I tried out different things. Uh, that's why I can find them here. And of course, uh, the naming of, is, of course, up to you. It's subjective, of course. So, and then sub agent. You can, uh, that's what I meant with having said you can create agentic frameworks. You can create one agent which has not only access to tools, so specific skills the agent has, but also to sub agents. Meaning, if the agent itself, for instance, doesn't know uh, how to handle this, he can delegate the task, uh, so the user query, to a sub agent. 
And then the sub-agent can use his skills, tools, and knowledge in order to answer this and, and then get the result back to the this agent here. And this agent can then back, go back to the user, for instance. So that would be one option. In my case, um, I have created a router agent, meaning I have an agent in between. So I have a user who is uh, actually asking prompts. So that's me or, or we, uh, us, for instance, right? So we are asking our prompts. Then I have a router agent and router agent has access to sub-agents. And then he's delegating our uh, query to the relevant sub-agent who is um, then able to answer the query. That is the idea behind that. That's my agentic framework approach. But uh, you can see that, as I said, you can add tools simply by clicking on add. And if you go to sub agent section, also click here, you can say, I want to add this agent, for instance, right? And then this new agent would then have this agent or this agent and so on, simply by clicking add here as sub agent and can also then delegate tasks to the specific sub agent. So that's basically how that works. And Metadata, that's not that interesting. And advanced settings, you go here, you can also choose, for instance, what kind of model you use. Uh, by default, it's GPT-40 Mini, uh, which you can use, as I said, for your 100 uh, daily credits for free. You can also choose other kinds of models if you want to do that. That's also available. And you can also play around with the uh, model settings. But by default, I, leave, uh, I have left the default settings here um, when trying that out. But as I said, uh, if you want to change this, you can go there and, and changing a few things here. So that's basically the configuration of an agent. And when you're done with that, then your agent would appear here and then you can use it actually. So um, then the tools, let's have a look at the tools as well. The tools, as you can see here, these are my tools. This is simply by uh, clicking no tool. If you go there, up there, then you can create a tool, click on create tool, and then you have here various inputs because um, um, it's, it works like this, right? You have an input to a tool, which means, so for instance, the user prompt or user query, right? This is the input. And uh, then this input is then transferred via various steps which you can see here, you can use, uh, if you go to add step here, there are various steps. For instance, you can run an API request, you can do a Google search, you can send it to an LLM uh, in order to then uh, do anything with the query itself. You can write uh, JavaScript code, that's what I meant. It's actually a no code platform, but you can write code. Also Python code, by the way, as you can see here, uh, if you want to do that, that's also possible. And uh, then there are also kind of other sections, as you can see here, generation, you can use one of these tools here, for instance, I have tried Element Labs just to send my text to Element Labs and then get an audio back. This, for instance, you can also try other kinds of things, right? Translate text and so on, and also refer to knowledge. So if you want to retrieve knowledge, having a vector store, that's also possible in here. There are various options, uh, either inserting data or, of course, getting data uh, specific uh, for a prompt, for instance, right? This is also available in here. And there are other ones here as well. Um, I encourage you to click through it if you want to do that, uh, but there are various uh, options you have. And the it's kind of easy because you just choose the tool you want. For instance, if I go to Google here, you see that now I have a Google tool and all it needs is here a search query. So what is the term you want to search for? And then it generates an output and then you can add the next step. So there's nothing really to program here. Just click what you need and then the tool is exactly handling this. So starting with an input, then it does a Google search. And then for instance, I want the LLM. Here's the next step. And here I just use what the Google search found and use an LLM and for instance, summarize it or anything like that. So that would be possible simply by that. And uh, then of course you want to name your tool up there and also make sure that the tool had a, has a description. And up here, as you can see, this is important because you want to give an exact description of what this tool is capable of. So when the agent uh, then has access to the tool as one of his skills or her skills, then of course the agent needs to know, okay, when should I use this tool? What can the tool do for me? So that's what needs to be put here. So that's um, so just make sure that the agent knows when to run this tool and when not to run this tool. So let's go back. Uh, here, yes, I want to leave. I don't want to save it. And then knowledge, uh, the final thing here can upload knowledge up front. So if you want to upload specific kind of documents and want to give uh, um, the agent access to the document, then you can upload it here. Simply um, it's PDF files, anything like that, you can simply upload it. Go to create table and then upload your files in here. It's kind of simple. So uh, that's uh, the main uh, actually areas. And then there are also uh, activity center and links. You can see uh, when you run agents and so on. But uh, I think this is not in so interesting for us now. More interesting is actually the agent running itself. So let's go back to the agent itself, uh, go here. And then you see here, there's once an agent. And if I want to run the agent, I just click on the agent, right? Then I could run it here for instance. So if I go here, uh, then you also see uh, in here, this is what the router agent, and then I can simply ask him something to do. I also have here this week, this is something, a conversation which I have done in the past. But here, for instance, this router agent um, actually is, uh, as, my, as I said, this is an agent which is sit in the middle and delegating my user query to the appropriate sub agents, which he has access to. And so if I say, for instance, um, I want to listen to the latest news on NVIDIA. This for instance, 
So, and uh, then if I go to um, and press control enter, or just click and run button, you see it now, it starts actually working. So you can see this also here, there's one step performed in background, delegating to the search agent. So as I said, the road agent has access to two sub agents, which is a search agent and also the voice agent, meaning the search agent itself, he is responsible for looking up what are the latest news on video. And the voice agent has access to 11 labs, meaning when the search agent is done, sending back uh, the updates, so the latest news on NVIDIA, to the router agent. The router agent uses this uh, news then and send it to the, the second agent. So let me go here to the voice agent. The voice agent used then the summary and then actually converted this with the 11 labs tool into audio. And then this audio is sent back and you can see here, this is now um, the summary from the first agent. And the second agent, the voice agent here, has created this uh, this link, listen to audio, and I can click this, and then I can listen to the file. So if I go there, now it's downloaded, and if I double click just to open this. NVIDIA has recently announced new partnerships to enhance drug discovery and genomic research in the healthcare sector. The company's stock rose by four... So hopefully you heard it, but actually it's exactly what is here as text is just stored in the audio file and I downloaded it simply by clicking on this link. So this is created by those two agents and hopefully you can already see that this is a multi-agent framework because there's no one agent who is actually doing everything, but instead I have one router agent who is receiving the query of the user, then he decides, okay, based on this query, which is the first agent I need to send the, the, the query to, in this case, it's the search agent. He receives then the result of the search agent, summarizes the results, the main points, and then sends the summary to the next agent, because then he decides, okay, the user, in this case me, said, I want to listen to the latest news. Meaning then, okay, then I send the summary to the voice agent. The voice agent is using then the uh, tool, the Eleven Labs tool to convert it into audio. And then of course, this audio is then sent back as a link, as you can see here, which I can then click and download and then I can listen to that. For instance, and when I'm on doing my fitness or anything like that, right, I could, could listen to that as a, as a podcast. So that's basically the idea how that works. And as you can see here, you can really take a look closer in what happens. That's also what I think very, very interesting and relevant to AI that you can see exactly what happens. So which, uh, which actually, well, um, transaction has been has been done right so here sending the data to this agent here you can also click on view the conversation then you can see here uh, also perform background here for instance you can see that this was sent to the search agent and the search agent used the goose tool I call it goose tool but it's Google search tool that's what I mean here right so this is a tool which the search agent has access to and then of course here you can see that summary which is sent back then to the um, the router agent so uh, let's go back in here and let's actually have a look. You see that this works exactly as I said. Uh, this is the example I have. Let me just show you one agent, for instance, a search agent, because we were here. This search agent here, you can also run it on its own, but in this case, uh, let me just show you it. Let's go to configure here for the agent itself. You see that this is my search agent. So you are a search agent providing summaries for the latest Google search results based on a given query, right? So um, there are no further triggers. So the, tr the, the agent itself is called by the road agent. And then the core instructions have a role, as I said here, this is markdown. Um, you can put the markdown code in here. And you are a search agent, your primary role is to perform Google searches using the Google search tool, so this Google tool. And provide a concise summary of the search results. You handle queries related to retrieving the latest information from the web. Then the goal, search the request information using the search tool. Provide the router agent with a clear, concise summary of the search results. Ensure the information retrieved is relevant, accurate, and up-to-date. So this is the goal, and then tool itself, here's a description of the tool, um, what it does, what's input to the tool, and what's the output of the tool, and then the standard operating procedure, right? So that's basically how this uh, core instruction here for the search agent works. And then also, you can give it a few examples, and that's basically it, so for the construction. So there, you should invest a little bit more time so you really specify what um, an agent is actually doing. And uh, then uh, the next important point is the tools. The tools itself here, as you can see, it has one tool, which is the Goose tool. You can add additional tools if you go to add tools. And then you can specify here, how should the tool run? Because there are two options, either uh, auto run or approval is required. So the idea is if you want to have a human in the loop, meaning you don't want the tools to run automatically, you just want to have uh, the agent asking you, should I run this tool? I want to run this tool and you can then decide. Then you set it to approval required, but if you want to uh, your, well, uh, AI framework and agency framework run automatically, you should it put to auto run. And then also, which may make sense here, max auto runs. So in this case, for me, it's just one, 
because I don't have too many tokens, as you've seen, the 100 uh, token daily limit, so or credit daily, daily limit, so I need to be a little bit careful here, but uh, normally you would probably set this maybe to two or three, just in case uh, the first run uh, run into an error, for instance, and you want your agent to retry, you should put in a higher number, but I would not leave it completely blank, But because otherwise um, you can think of that the agent might try, I don't know, 10, 20 times, which is probably way too often. Um, if something, for instance, if a search result um, doesn't uh, give any very good results, then that's maybe it, right? If it runs into an error, it makes more sense to actually get the user uh, the feedback than uh, currently it can't do where, what the user is asking it to do. But as I said, it's up to you. You can try this out and test. So that's the tool section, sub-agents. There are no sub-agents because only the router has a sub-agents. This agent, for instance, has no further sub-agents. But I couldn't add them here if I would click on the add symbol here. Right? So that's basically that. And that's actually all the configuration. And then if you do this, uh, you've seen, then you can actually use the agent. You can see here, this is an example when you run because this is exactly what we tried out just a second ago. But then uh, you ha basically have your agents in here. And uh, that's basically Relevance AI in a nutshell. So uh, you hopefully have seen that this is completely no code, low code, and uh, you can get started for free, All right? Uh, you don't need any kind of credit card, anything like that. Um, you just can sign up for the free plan. You can see um, this run, which we have done, has cost me around uh, 28 uh, credits uh, for the day. So, um, but as I said, you get 100 credits each day. So they are um, replenished. And uh, you can create your, your agents here, you can try and test. Um, you can create tools, take check out tools, you can add knowledge. These are the most important things. And then you can actually create your agent with specific tools or your agentic framework having multiple agents working together. So that's it for this video. So if you enjoyed it, please give this video a like and also share it. If you have any kind of feedback, let me know. Also, if you want to see more uh, and other kinds of platforms, as I said, I tried N8N and also uh, I've seen Flowwise and there are also other kinds of no-code, low-code uh, platforms. And of course, as I said, there are also, uh, let's say, coding platforms or uh, coding, let's say, frameworks, which for instance, OpenAI Swarm or uh, and uh, um, AI, and there's also another one, um, I think it's called Fee Data, uh, which I also want to try out um, in the near future. So if you want to see this, also let me know. So thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.